All right. Thanks, Lindsay, for your awesome talk and also for the important work that you are doing for humanity. <laughs> for anyone in the audience who's feeling a little pooped at this point, never fear, we've only got one more. So last but not least, we're closing off with Arish Shah, graduate student in the lab of Eliezer Callow. Arish grew up in Fremont, California, and his undergrad in surfing, or sorry, excuse me, bioinformatics <laughs> at UC San Diego. Arish was drawn into a career in research by great professors and TAs who showed him the power of asking interesting questions and applying tools to better understand the world around us. His favorite feeling is being the only person in the world who knows something new about nature. So with that, give it up for Arish. Uh, so as you guys seen on my slide, you know, I were, I'm going to be talking about moving out of the house and gaining independence from mom. And shout out to my mom, today is her birthday. Um, also, Mother Day, Mother's Day is coming up soon, you know, for those of you who forgot, it's a quick reminder. Um, so all of us have a mother, right? You know, we were carried around for a few months. Uh, the mother sort of incubates our developing bodies and gives birth to us. And for a moment of time, 100% of everything that we do is controlled by our mother. The food that you eat, the places you go, and the people you see. And this is incredibly important, right? When we're born, we're these helpless babies. That's me. Um, we're all these helpless babies, and like, we need that. We need this like, maternal contribution to get us through life. But also, it's incredibly important that eventually we gain independence from our mothers and we move on. And as you know, a funny story is my mom would always tell me if I didn't eat my vegetables, the boogeyman would come and eat me, um, you know, which is kind of funny. But you know, while it's important to eat your vegetables, eventually there's a switch, right? When I was maybe five or six years old, I realized the boogeyman's not real. I don't need fear to tell me to eat my vegetables, and I'm going to make my own choices. And the same way, you know, like my mom would take me to ice cream shop or the mall or little league practice. And eventually, there's also a switch there where I got my driver's license and I became my own independent person. And so other than bragging about my mom, the reason I'm telling you all this is that this same handoff from maternal contribution to a, leading to independence as an adult happens at the molecular level as well. So in all animals, mothers deposit quite a lot of material into the egg of the future embryo. And this material, all these molecules, control 100% of all the stuff that happens in early development. And so this material, researchers have figured out, is not only essential for proper development, but also the removal of this material is also essential for the animal to gain independence and become its own organism. And so in my research, I'm looking into using the zebrafish as a model organism to look into this practice of how the organism clears this maternally contributed molecules. And it's, the zebrafish is a good system because over the course of one day, that's when this handoff occurs from the mother to the developing organism. So it's incredibly experimentally tractable. And so for a few decades now, researchers have known that all the genetic information in the form of mRNA that gets degraded in the first two or three hours where I've put the arrow, two or three hours of development. But over the, in my PhD, I found that while mRNAs are degraded early, much like the boogeyman example, right, it's very important to have it early and then decay it also early. You don't want to believe in the boogeyman until you're 18, right? Um, ribosomes, which are the protein production factories of the cell, those are degraded quite much later at 10 hours, much like getting your driver's license and gaining independence then. So this is an interesting model where we can measure the mechanisms that are at play here to degrade both the mRNAs and the ribosomes differently. And so with that, I'd like to thank you for your time and also thank your moms or any paternal fi parental figures you have in your life. They're great. <laughs> All right, you're going to need to get out your phone or laptop, just really any web-enabled device. Also, thank you, Arish. Thank you, everybody, actually. Great job, everybody. <laughs> and you're going to go to menti.com, spelled M-E-N-T-I, and you're going to put in the code 95584. 
And we're gonna wait five minutes for all the votes to come in. We have a live feed here, which you can't see uh, of the votes coming in. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> then we'll announce the audience choice winner and that will also give the judges time to deliberate and we'll announce the judges choice winner. And don't forget to join us in the reception afterwards in 68181. All right, everyone. It looks like most people are done voting. We haven't had a new vote come in in a little while, but in case you're still deciding, this is your 10 second warning. <laughs> 10, <laughs> nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and we're done. Woo! Okay. The winner of the audience choice for the second annual MIT Biology Science Slam is Sophia. We are very excited to announce, well, first of all, I should say, I already think that cell division and segregation are super interesting and awesome, but Becca, you did a fantastic job of selling it and making it interesting to everybody, so you are our choice. flag for all of our slammers to thank them for coming out and fearlessly uh, talking about their projects in front of this huge room. So if you guys go. But while we're doing that, you can congratulate them again for being so awesome. And we also have swag for our judges to thank them for coming all the way out here today. These uh, thermally insulated MIT biology bags. Great. <laughs>